Teacup Writer here with another review. Um, today I'll be looking at um, the Traveler's Company Notebook, as well as a Lamy Safari and a Caveco Sport. Um, I apologize for the delay in content. I have been abroad um, traveling to Scotland with my wife, but I hope you enjoy the video. Ah. Hello, so um, today I wanted to go over a couple different things. I have been very bad about making videos, but I figured I might as well just lump everything into one video. It makes it easier for me and it gets content to you. Um, today I will be looking at the uh, standard size traveler's notebook. This is in the brown. Um, I have been using it for about... Uh, two, three weeks. So there's already a patina going on the leather and um, I've just been able to kind of look at the paper and just see how I like it. Uh, I also want to go over a Lamy Safari. Um, this is a broad nib pen. Um, I just wanted to get a pen that had a like kind of a better flow. I am left-handed so uh, I've heard that Lamy pens are there's a pros and a cons to them, but I, I found that me personally, I really do like them. And also um, the Caveco Sport. Uh, I kind of got these two to review in contention of each other to see which one was better. It's not really a comparison considering this one is a fine and this one is a broad nib. I did, however, get the Lamy version of the fine nib so in a video in the future I might compare the two side by side I just don't have the nib on now and it is inked so you can see that maybe in the future and we'll uh, compare the two but anyways um, right off the bat you can see it right here um, this is a traveler's company notebook um, I actually stumbled upon this I, I've seen them before but I stumbled upon it from another YouTuber. I can't remember the name, but I will link their page in the uh, in the bottom so that you're able to check out some of her videos. Uh, she kind of sold me on this idea of having a notebook that um, it aged the more you used it. I've been using a lot of um, Lockbee stuff and it's amazing. The canvas does age, but um, I just have a soft spot when it comes to leather. I just like the way it feels, the way it looks and also the way it smells. Um, so just over the couple of weeks I've had it, there's already scratches, um, there's a patina growing, and I just like it. It just reminds me of, um, of all the places I've been and just that it's been used, uh, in my opinion. Um, I won't do an unboxing. Everything that comes in the box is here, but you can go see that on YouTube. This is just gonna be kind of my opinion about the notebook in general. Um, so far, I mean, obviously it is in comparison to a standard notebook that I'm using, it's, it's the same height, but it's just, um, it's a bit smaller when it comes to the width, which is fine. I was kind of concerned that it would be a lot smaller. Um, it would just be awkward for me as a left-handed person, but it's been pretty good. Um, and it's super customizable. I've since I've bought this, I've been checking out what other people do with theirs. And it is one of those things where it's just really for everybody. You can really do whatever you want with it. Make it your own. There's different colors. There's brown. There's like a camel. There's a blue, which I've heard turns more into a green. And I'm pretty sure there's a black. Uh, me personally, I love brown. As you can see with this. And with this, I just have like I just like the color um, more than uh, than the black counterpart. But anyways, um, Lockby note or excuse me, uh, Traveler's Company notebook has an enclosure, which is nice, keeps it all together. It's just an elastic, open it up, and it's just right to the notebooks. One thing I like about their notebooks is they're not branded. I mean, the first page has the name. And the last page has some information, but as far as like the outside, they're not branded. 
Lockbee does brand theirs on the outside and it's not a big deal, but it's sometimes it's nice to have unbranded things. Um, that way it's just, it just looks like a notebook. That's all it is. Anyways, but um, when you get the actual notebook, it comes with just the one, the one notebook inside. So um, you do need to buy more. It comes with a blank. I don't mind the blank. I could buy a rule. There's planners. There's grid paper. There's so many different ones. There's water cut. Like, the amount of notebooks they, they have going on for this company is ridiculous. So I would uh, suggest you seeing if there's one that kind of fits what you do before you buy one of these. But for me, the standard blank paper works perfectly. Um, it does come on the spine already. So if you wanted to get more notebooks, you could use the second spine here, but they also sell like a little, like a little grid of like four extra elastics. So if you wanted to keep putting on more elastics, you could just buy those additional. I typically just use the one and then just shove this in the back and close it. I found that it, it, it suits my needs and, and when it's closed, it's not going to go anywhere. But anyways, the, um, trying to make this quick, but it's hard because it's really, there's a lot to talk about. Um, the inside of the notebook, um, again, unbranded, but it does have this little window. So you are able to, um, to kind of put what it's about. So far, I've just been using it. I've been, uh, doing a couple of studies on the book of Matthew. So I have some notes on, um, just the first couple chapters. One thing I have found, um, about, uh, this paper, and I'm not sure if it's just the Lamy, but I just feel like there's more shading to this ink than I've ever seen before. I've, I've, I mean, I have other notebooks and I've used plenty of different paper. I believe this paper is Midori, but I just, the shading that is on the, the notebook from the ink is just crazy. And it, it, again, it just makes it so much more enjoyable to see, um, the different tones when you're writing. You can see kind of here, like there's just, I don't know if the camera does it justice, but there's just, there's light and dark and it's just, it really kind of brings out the color of the ink. Um, I don't know if this one will show it better, but uh, well, I guess it's upside down. But you can just see there's more definition to this ink. And this ink is um, Lamy's ink so it's a it's i think it's a blue black ink um so typically when you buy one of their pens it comes with the, just a standard blue so the first couple of pages on here was a standard blue and then it went into the blue black at the end and one thing i will say is um the lamy pen is a wet pen so you do go through i think i go through an ink cartridge once a week once every other week depending on how much i write so that's pretty cool it's always satisfying um changing the ink in your pen, which gets me to my next point, which is the Lamy Safari. Um, again, I won't do an unboxing because the packaging here is pretty minimal. It just comes with a instructions guide and then the pen. It, I mean, the, you don't need much more, but the pen is, I got it in the black. So it is just completely black. There is an ink window. And if I'm not mistaken, I read that this was made from the same material as a Lego block, which is super cool. I'm super, uh, super soft spot for Legos. Um, growing up, they were my favorite. So it's kind of cool that they're made of Lego blocks. Maybe I'll get some different colors and maybe I can uh, kind of compare it. But um, super basic pen, nothing fancy. It does have a clasp on the front, which is a little bit tight but it works perfectly. Again, like I said, there's the ink window and this one doesn't unscrew. You just pull it off right now. Like I said, it is a, where's the camera? It is a broad nib. So um, I got a, a wetter pen. They do have a left-handed nib. I will be getting that soon. Um, but I just, I've read so many people saying that it doesn't really do what you would think it does and that it's just um it's more in of an oblique nib 
so it's more rounded at the end. But um, I think the only complaint that I have about this pen is just the finger grooves. Um, you can tell that it is made for right-handed people. And I get it, you know, that's a big population. I wish they, when you buy the left-handed pen, I wish the either the finger grooves were gone or they are just um, kind of turned towards left-handed. I know people who write like this, but I write like this. So I kind of rest my index finger on this first um, indentation, and then I'll write like this, kind of an, um, not a side writer, but a above writer. I guess that's what you would call in left-hand terminology. But like I said, this pen, um, let me think, see if I can get some paper. This pen is very wet, so let me zoom in just a bit. Oops, wrong way. Okay. There we go. So I typically write from this way. Oh, what am I gonna say? Uh, I guess the quick fox jumps. So that's just normal speed for me. That's typically how I use it, but it's just, even when you're, when I'm writing from above, for being left-handed, it's just so smooth. There's not any stops. I have said in previous videos that um, of all the pens that I have, that um, they're all pretty good. I have noticed on my Waterman um, a bit of trouble lately. I think the the tines, I think is what it is referred to, the two points of the nib are kind of off. So it makes it a bit difficult, um, but everything else is great. Um, this, coincidentally, I love the pen so much that I bought a second one. This one is just a cartridge, which is what I showed you. And then this one I bought the converter for. So I wanted to test, you know, is Lamy ink really that good or is it just the pen? So I got a cartridge or excuse me, a converter. And this is with um, my writer's blood ink is what I have at the focus inside of it right now. So let's see what the difference is, if any at all. So as you can see, it's the same thing. I don't, there's no stops on this pen. Um, and it's just honestly, for as cheap as it is, as it is, like you can get these for twenty dollars. It is the best pen that I've had for the price point. I mean, for a starter pen, it's this pen. I would use this pen. I mean, I've right now I'm writing another book, and I've already written part one and part two of this uh, book with just a Safari. It's just so smooth. I don't get um, a sore wrist. And I think, you know, writing things by hand with, as a left-handed person where you're constantly, you're, you're dragging across the page rather than uh, pulling, it, it gets tiring on my wrist. But with this pen, I, I feel um, I can write for hours. Obviously, uh, I have to eventually fill it up because I do run through ink pretty quick. These do run pretty wet. Which brings me to my next Thing, which is the Caveco Sport. Let me zoom out of here real quick. So, Caveco Sport. Um, comes in a little neat box. Uh, again, just minimal packaging, just some instructions, nothing crazy. One thing I like about these pens, they're both German made, which is I'm a supporter of, but they're, they're just, it's just the pen in the box. There doesn't need to be a some extravagant open case. It's just, it is what, it, you're getting what you're paying for essentially. And the Caveco Sport was something that I wanted um, to stick with my field journal. That way I can just stick it on there 
and then um, I have a ruler in the back. So when I'm out and about, I can just use this. It's super small. Um, a lot of people might not like it because it is pretty, it is a lot smaller as far as the grip. Um, it's nice. This one is a twist, which is perfect. Um, funny story with this pen, I left it in my pocket and um, it did come undone and bleed all over the inside of my jean. So that was pretty tragic, which is why I started putting my pens in a case rather than a pocket. Anyways, lesson learned. Caveco Sport. This is a special edition green. I don't know what's special about it other than it says it's a special edition. Um, when you buy the pen, this little clasp is not included, so you will need to buy this additionally. I think I picked it up for like three bucks. It was pretty cheap. Kind of feels weird that it's not, in, it's not included, but again, it's only 20 bucks. What can you expect? Um, it's gold, gold. Um, it does unscrew, like I said, so you just unscrew it. It's gold here. Um, again, nobody, I mean, you could write like this, but the, man, the pen is meant to be posted. So when you post it, it does become a full length pen. Um, but again, the grip section here is a bit small. Um, you can see the nib. Let me see if I can focus. There's the Conveco logo and you can see the F for fine. So um, I decided to get a fine point pen because I have lots of medium, broad. I do want to get a stub. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get something a little bit finer. I do have an extra, an extra fine, which is the Waterman that I reviewed previously, but I wanted to get something a bit um, different. And this is my first Coveco Sport, so I have seen a lot of people use these as well. It's crazy how big of a community for just these two pens. I mean, you can go, you can spend a bunch of money on pens, but at the end of the day, a lot of these pens are what is being used. So I decided to give it a go. Um, and we will see what happens. So this is just the typical cartridge in that or in it now that you get from Caveco. I think it's blue, just like Lamy. So I haven't used it all. Um, one thing that I want to mention is that these cartridges um, are a lot smaller. So you might go through these quicker. Lamy's are like at least this tall. Um, but you can get a converter for this. I haven't gotten one yet. I just figured with how small the pen is, I'd be sitting there inking it up every five days. So I haven't bought it yet. I may get it in the future, but we'll see. Anyways, let's do a writing sample with this pen. I'm doing it in the wrong way. Okay. Good. So, um... So there is the Caveco Sport. It is not as smooth as the Lamy, but that is to be expected considering this is a fine nib. However, it is still very good. Like I said, I will try to do a video, uh, a video comparison of the two pens from a left-handed point of view. Um, it's just basically what works best for me. This has not gotten a lot of use because I have been using these things religiously. So I will need to use this more often. But again, it's a good pen. You can stick it in your pocket. Doesn't need. It's not going to unscrew like one of these. And um, it's overall a nice pen. Um, I think that is everything. Um, again... I will do more videos in the future. I do apologize for the delay in content. I was out in beautiful Scotland, brought back a postcard, um, and it was just a very good trip. Um, I used um, my Lockby field journal, or excuse me, pocket journal while I was there, 
and you know detailed you know all the things that I did and all the things that I saw and just felt nice to go somewhere new and somewhere that I hadn't been before um, so yeah but that's my excuse um, I won't make any more um, you should see more content coming soon and if you have any questions about this um, feel free to leave a comment uh, I'm trying to cater more of my content towards left-handed perspective um, it seems like there's a pretty big interest for that and I am interested in sharing you what things work for me and what things could hopefully improve your left-handed fountain pen experience. Thank you so much and I hope you have a great day.